Hey, what's up, y'all? It's Pat from Texas Freshwater Fly Fishing uh, here with another Tuesday tie for you. Um, the spring is coming pretty soon here. The winter's wrapping up, and that in Texas means the white bass are about to start running. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and tie up one of my favorite white bass flies today. Uh, it's called the SMP fly, and we're going to tie it in this beige and white. Beige and white SMP. Uh, you can tie it in a bunch of other colors. I really like just the solid white. Um, and chartreuse and white is great for white bass also. Chartreuse and white. Uh, you can go olives, olive and white. But uh, like I said, we're going to go this kind of beige. Beige and white. That's what we're tying up today. All right. We're going to tie it up on this size 10 hook here. This is a Umqua uh, U120BL nymph hook. We tie it up in a size 10. Um, you can tie it, I'll, eights work great for white bass too. Um, you can tie it a little bit smaller. Great panfish fly, that's what it was originally created for. Um, but yeah, we're, we're tying it up a size 10 today. It's real successful for me. Um, we're gonna use a base of a white thread and we're just gonna start by wrapping that white thread down the hook shank. Now, one thing we want to be careful with with this fly is we really want to get those wraps down the hook shank right next to each other and make it real flat and smooth. It's going to take some time to get those right. So you're going to stop on the first wrap right before the bend in the shank. Okay, so go ahead and get that there and then wrap back up real smooth Lay it down right next to each other. We don't want bumps, like a real smooth fly. Right next to each other, we're gonna wrap right back up to where we started. Okay, right back to where you started. And then we're gonna go back down again. But this time we're not gonna go all the way. Um, what we're gonna use for the weight for the fly is some bead chain. Okay, this is a medium sized bead chain in silver. These white bass, I like these silver bead chain eyes. And you wanna put the bead chain, you're gonna end up putting it about one bead length, right? One bead length behind the hook of the eye. So like we do with the Clouser Minnow, um, I'm gonna create just a little bit of a lip right in front of where I want it to be, a little bump right in front of where I want it to be. That way I can hold, kind of slide my eye right up to it and it holds it in place right there. I do five wraps one way with this fly, five wraps the other way. Make sure my eyes are getting on there straight. Okay. At this point, we're gonna put just a drop of super glue, real light, just a drop of super glue to kind of hold those in place. Ooh, my super glue is getting kind of dry. One, two, three, four, five again. One, two, seven, one, two. And then circle wraps under the eye, above the hook shank. Usually do about five. Okay, and then we'll bring our thread to right behind the eyes. And we're gonna tie in our ribbing. With the original SMP, um, they don't use a wire, they use tinsel. Um, but I like to add a little bit of wire here just to add a little bit of weight. I'm gonna use this silver lead free wire. And when I'm tying this in, I'm gonna lay it right down the back of the fly. Real smooth down the bottom. It's actually, it's gonna end up being the bottom of the fly. Lay it perfectly down the middle. And again, as we're wrapping back towards the hook shank, we wanna lay those threads right next to each other, creating a real smooth surface. Take your time, do a good job. Now, once you get back to where your original thread wraps ended, I try to push that wire down along the bend of the hook shank, because we're gonna start wrapping down that bend just a little bit. I usually go about three wraps past where I stopped the first time. 
and then we wrap back up real smooth. Okay, then we're gonna go back down again. What we're doing here is building a body with the thread, right? We're building a body with the thread and I'm gonna wrap back down all the way to the bend or where I stopped last time and then passed it for another three or four wraps. This is my second layer of the body thread. Two, three, and then carefully wrap your thread right next to each other, keeping that smooth body all the way back up to the eyes again. As we go past where we left off, we're going to end up getting a little bit narrower tied towards the end of the hook. It kind of creates a little uh, different size in the body towards the tail of the fly. So now we're going to go one more time. I do four, four trips of the body down and back. This is my fourth time down. Be real careful to leave a smooth body. Wrap your thread right next to each other. Okay, keep that down. Two, three, Four. Notice we've gone down a little bit into the bend of the hook there. And then back up. And you can kind of see, if you're looking at it, the taper that we've created on the body of the fly. A little bit narrower down towards the tail. Oops. Lay it down smooth, smooth as you can. If you don't have it perfect, that's okay. Just try. Okay, we're gonna wrap right back to behind the eyes. We're gonna take our wire and we're gonna make the ribbing in the fly. So I usually get about six or seven wraps with my wire. We wanna keep it tight and evenly spaced. So pull that wire tight as you're going against the thread, against the body of your fly. Six. And then that last wrap, we come in front of the thread and bring it over to right between the eyes. Okay. Now we're going to tie it off. I usually take two wraps one direction. One, two. Then I like to tighten up my wire, shorten that up there. And I'll take one, two, three wraps, four wraps sometimes the other way to hold that down. Go ahead, bend it around to snap that wire off. A couple more wraps to make sure it's good and secured down. Then what we're gonna do is just do a quick two wrap whip finish. One, two, doesn't have to be anything too great. Right there. Tie it off. At this point, I usually put a little bit of fly head cement. If you really want to get good and crazy with it and you're tying up a bunch of these, which you should be, a little fly head cement to the body. Okay, actually you don't want to put a little bit, put quite a bit. I try not to get it too much between the eyes. If you do, that's okay. But cover that body real good in fly head cement. Um, that's gonna harden up on there and kind of protect the fly as you're fishing for the white bass. Uh, then, like I said, we're gonna tie up a bunch of them. So go ahead, take that part, let it dry, and we'll go ahead and move on and start tying another one. Same thing. What's up, y'all? Um, we're back, we're gonna go ahead and finish up this SMP that we started tying. Again, this, this pattern, this design, I, I use almost specifically for white bass and the white bass run here in the early spring. 
Um, but this SMP is a great fly. You can tie it up for all sorts of things. Tie it up a little bit smaller, a little bit shorter wing on it. Uh, it's great for sunfish. Tie it up a little bit bigger into some different colors. Shoot, even this white one um, is great for uh, bass here in the rivers in Texas and stuff too. So anyway, as you can see, I went ahead and got my fly. Uh, it's all dried up, clamped in my vise, ready to go. We're gonna go ahead and get that white thread back. Go ahead and get it wrapped on. And then we're ready to start tying on the rest of the fly. The rest of the fly is just pretty much wing. Um, and for the wing, we're gonna be using marabou, right? Uh, the base layer, this first layer, I usually use almost always exclusively white. Now I can change it up if I'm doing something different, some salt water flies with it, but um, I really like a base bottom layer of the wing in white. Now, some problems that I make, some mistakes that I make and, and problems I see in these flies a lot um, is putting too much marabou in there, especially on the top portion of the wing or sometimes leaving it too long. Now with white bass, uh, largemouth bass, those kind of flies, I don't mind the wing being a little bit longer, but if you're tying this up, the SMP, if you're tying it up for those panfish, those sunfish, um, you do want to make that wing a little shorter because they have a tendency to just kind of tail bite there. Um, so <clears throat> really you want the wing to kind of stick out one body length, one hook length past the, uh, past the, the end of the hook, um, ideally, but that can kind of vary. So what I do is I'll take a good chunk of the wet white as my base layer and I'll go ahead and wrap kind of two wraps one way, one wrap the other way, cross wrapping around that eye there. We're tying this wing, not in front of the eye, but right on top of it, kind of right on top of it. So I, I do that, get it in there loosely so that I can adjust this how I want. That was a little bit long for what I wanted. So I can tug it, pull it, get the length on that wing that I want right there. All right, once I got that in there, I usually Try to clean it up just a little bit. Give it a couple more wraps to secure. And then I'll take that bunch of marabou and trim it up as close as I can. Okay. Get that good and cleaned up there. All right. <clears throat> Once we got that cleaned up, I'm going to give it a few more wraps. Kind of secure it in place. Make sure my flies on there well. more wraps to secure that in place and then here I come in and I'll put another just little drop of super glue yeah my super glue is getting kind of dry a little drop of super glue a couple more wraps and that locks that in place all right after we get that wing tied in, kind of wrapped in, everything's good there. We're gonna take a little bit of crystal flash, and I put some flash in here, a little bit of crystal flash, and we're gonna tie some flash in, in between our two layers of this wing. So I'll take my strand, I'll double it over, kind of make those ends the same length there. And I'll go ahead, do it this way. and give it a wrap to hold it in place there. One direction. And then a wrap the other way. Get that one. Wrap in that crystal flash. Then I'll take it, move it over to the other side. And give it a couple X wraps around the eye again. And I try to trim my crystal flash to about the length of the marabou. You can see how I tied that in right there. Just little X wraps. Okay. Same thing as I did for the wing. Now for the top portion of the wing, I'm going to use this kind of tannish grayish marabou. Um, and this, this top layer of the wing, you usually want to go a little bit thinner. Um, it's going to be on top of everything. You don't want it to cover up all the white underneath. So I usually go a little bit thinner with my marabou, especially if I'm tying these up for white bass. 
Um, if I'm doing something for largemouth and almost imitating a crayfish, I'll tie it a little bit differently. But for the white bass, you get yourself a little clump of that. And you're gonna do the same thing. X wraps around the eyes. One, two. Secure that in place and make sure it's where you want it to be. So it's where you want it to be. Make sure you lock it in and trim it up. Get that cleaned up. Once you got it cleaned up, then we're gonna take our thread, not only locking it in place, but using our thread, laying it down carefully to cover up the rest of that marabou. Okay, wraps both directions. I'll usually lay about four or five down one direction, flip to the other side, really smooth things out. Go back and forth a couple times. Make sure you have everything covered. Take your time, make it pretty. Once that's in there, a few wraps to secure it at the front of the fly. I give it a couple whip finishes. First one, three. Next one, four. Trim it up. Carefully, we're gonna put that head cement on there. You wanna make sure you cover everything. So go ahead, rotate it around. In your vice if you need to take it out if you need to get a lot of head cement on there but be careful don't get it into your marabou now sometimes once i get a bunch on there to carefully spread it around you can take your bodkin kind of move it where you need to to make sure you get all your thread wraps covered take it out of your vice Get everything covered there, and there you go. There's your fly. The SMP, tied in a white and tan. It's a great fly, great fly for uh, white bass. Hope you learned something. Hope you can catch some fish. Be sure you check out more on TexasFreshwaterFlyFishing.com. Uh, like the videos, go ahead and like it. Make sure you subscribe. It really helps me out. Thanks a ton, guys. I'll see you all next week.